Um, it's fair to say that you were very popular with the ladies. I was lucky that one or two of the most beautiful girls that I met uh, were willing to scrape the bottom of the barrel and, and uh, be, go out with me. Without wanting to ruin the book, there was one particular story where a DJ ruined one particular relationship. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was, at the time I was going out with this beautiful girl in here um, and uh, we, we, were, we were sitting down by the harbour at two o'clock in the morning listening to Radio Luxembourg as you did in those days and uh, I was very fond of her um, and uh, yes we were just chatting away and, and it came over the radio it, it was request time and we have we have a request here for uh, for a jump jockey riding in the north of England and I had actually spent several weeks of the summer in Newmarket away from her so she turned the radio up and said oh he says you might know this bloke anyway then the, the uh, DJ said oh it was a, a request for me and it was the Kath, Kath, it was Kathleen saying thank you for the lovely few weeks in Newmarket and of course there was a mild night and the windows were down and I had actually given this girl a ring and there was a little splash the ring had laid and landed it in the sea. <laughs> he also did a stint as a male model. Did you get to? Uh, did you get to oh, keep yes. the four hundred pound jacket? Bearing in mind this was the seventies. Yes. Do you, do you want to see it? You still got the jacket. I still got the jacket. I, but I could only wear it half a dozen, maybe eight times a year because it is so warm. It's fabulous. Do you want to see? We better not get it no, now. No, but no, we'll... okay. Yeah. <laughs> I still got it. It's, it was a wonderful jacket. And that was in nineteen seventy. <laughs> Six or seven. Yeah, that was, a, that was a nice few quid then, wasn't it? Bloody, it was a lot of money. It's a fabulous jacket. Apparently, it took six sheep to make it. Now, I, it, a lot of I've been doing a spoil the book for people because it's well worth reading. But I bring up a few stories from it. The, the book is only really available from the National, uh, the Newmarket Horse Racing Museum now. Okay. Yeah. So people can still get, can still get it. Oh yes, yes. Um, now, I must admit, I nearly dropped the book at the end of the Earl Jones chapter. <laughs> now, you tell us a bit like... about Earl Jones, because, if I put, well, you know, tell us a bit about that and that, what happened to him, because I, I can, you know. <laughs> oh, uh, what a wonderful character he was. I'm so sorry that I, it was, uh, I was quite late on, on in my career that I first met him, but <clears throat> what a tough bloke he was. Uh, um, I was riding this, this horse called Neiman, and um, he... He, he was. I was instructed to give him easy races, you see, because the owners were a Birmingham mafia, they called them, um, gangsters in, in Birmingham. And uh, anyway, he won this day at Warwick. It was a two mile five knobs hurdle, and I knew the ground would pursue him. And it was a cold day, so I'd put an extra pullover on under my colours and gone out there. And he looked at me a bit serious and he said, You're going to have to do your best today, mate. I said, it's too far for him, and he won't like this ground. He said, I've told him, he said, I've told them. He said, but they want to back him. So do your best. So I did my best, finished fifth, sixth, something. And there was a, and there, apart from the failure of that horse to win that day, there was a, some sort of political thing going on to do with the price of the horse, apparently. Anyway, that, uh, later that week, I got a phone call, and the, it was the police from Warwickshire. They said, you know, don't answer the door to anybody next day or two without knowing who it is. And then, because Earl had been kneecapped that night, that afternoon, he'd pulled up um, where he parked his car and somebody had been hiding in the bushes and blew his kneecap away with a 12 ball. Bloody hell. So that, what, what happened to him after that? He, he, he was never the same... Um, I went to see him in the hospital and I met him once afterwards and he retired to Ireland. He went off to Waterford and retired and he died some years ago in his 80s. Wonderful bloke, tough as old boots. He, the first, road, road, first, time I, first ride I had for him, girl, the, the, he, was, he was known as Killer Jones because his horses used to take a fierce, fierce hold and they didn't fall. They didn't, they didn't fall much, they knew how to jump. But anyway, he had this, this reputation in the weighing room. So I had his first ride for him. It was a four-year-old in a, in a chase at Worcester. 
Dave Cartwright came up to him and said, have you ridden this before? I said, no, it's my first ride for this boat. He said, I've ridden this. He said, he wasn't very good over hurdles. He said, I'm, I'm surprised he's running him in a chase. So, and yeah, there's several runners, there are a lot of runners, 14, 15, 16 runners, the two-mile novice chase. So I was, I was quietly out of, the, out of the starting gate, went round, finished fourth. He jumped all right, but he, he was quite small. But I, I was fairly cautious. I mean, he told me to give him a good run round. And uh, anyway, as I slid, slid off and landed on the ground, he, he leaned over and in my ear, he was, gave me, made, made a pointed remark. He said, uh, if you ride this again, he said, you'll give it a ride, will you? And I started, tried to give him some bullshit about missing the start, and that, but pff, he'd been a jockey, he knew. And then a few weeks later, I, asked, uh, I got the call to ride him again. But this was over a further, longer trip at Stratford. And, and he said, right, I've got in the paddock, and he said, uh, no, this, no mistakes this time. And he, uh, he said, do this and do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when that, he felt like a different horse, he felt a bit, um, a bit more on the ball. Anyway, uh, I was always in the first two or three, and uh, and he won, he won, he won. And going out, I noticed the horse was tw twenty to one on the boards, but he was only four or five to one when he came in. Oh, it was a terrific boat, great boat, and and he had a he stable jockey. He, um, his name escapes me now, but he was fantastic boat. He was, he, uh, uh, great. I just wish I'd met Earl when I was younger. Now, we mentioned these horses um, at the start. So the, the three big ones, that, the, the names yeah. that people still know today, Tingle Creek, Mad <coughs> Nurse and Sea Pigeon. Can yeah. you tell us a bit about each of those? Uh, Tingle Creek, he, he, he was... I, I, when I was at Tom Jones's, I rode him virtually every day, every day uh, that I could ride out. If I didn't ride him in those days, Fred the head lad would ride him. Yeah, he was a good horseman. Uh, but uh, it wasn't very often I didn't ride him every day, Tingle Creek. He very hard puller and jig jog, he'd drive you mad, but fantastic horse. Um, yeah, he, he was a great horse. And uh, I remember travelling to races with Tom Jones, which was quite rare. The first time I rode him, we were, when we were late getting there, and it was all in a bit of a rush. And he said, uh, I don't need, he said, you've seen this horse run. He said, because Tommy Stack had been riding him, and then the great David Mould. I was so honoured to be following David Mould onto this horse. And just I didn't win that day. Easeby Abbey won that day. The, the tacky ground stopped Seagull Creek, but wonderful horse. And I must say, I rode him just about every day at exercise. Wonderful horse. Um, be nice if he if he stayed a bit further, but he, he didn't. And, uh, and then I thought it might have been due to him that I got the call to ride. My first ride for East, Mr. Mr. Easterby was a, a horse in the King George called Canadis, lovely horse, bad legs. And then, then I got a call to ride Sea Pigeon. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. And that was at a Haydock in a big field. Um, and going out, a couple of people had told me how to ride him, you know, take, take your time and be there at the last. And that. And, but going out, uh, I was talking to David Golding, who knew the horse well because he'd been at Gordon Richards when the horse was there, and rode, he rode him in, a, in the Fighting Fifth the year before. And David said, he said, no, 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 he said, don't be hitting the front of the last. He said, halfway up the running is fine. Can you believe that? 19 runners. Anyway, turning for home, he made one mistake going down the back, and I, I was riding him quietly, like David said, and turning for home, I was last or second last of 19 runners. And I was still seventh, jumping the last, and there's a picture of him over there. And I was seventh jumping the last, and I won three or four lengths with 12 stone two on his back. Yeah. What a horse. And I, I rode him twice more, and he was just unbelievable. Unbelievable horse. And then um, Night Nurse, oh, Night Nurse was an icon. I mean, I, I'd watched him run with Paddy on him, Paddy Roderick. And, and then Paddy got hurt, and I rode him... I rode him in a couple of hurdles. I rode him in a Scottish champion hurdle first time. And, I, I, oh, sorry. Um, uh, um, and Peter Eastby said that I had gone, hadn't gone fast enough early on. Um, well, that's the first time I'd ridden him. I, I thought I was going like the wind, but but I finished second to Sea Pigeon. That was the race in which Golden Signet fell at the last. He looked like he would have beaten both of us, uh, but he broke his neck. 
uh, at the last. And then, then I rode night and night in the that big sponsored hurdle race at Haydock. He had a lot of weight, and I, th- I finished third to a very lightly weighted horse of Fred Rimmel's. You, very, you know, he was very fortunate to get in with that weight. And then the night and went chasing the next season, and John Joe rode him first time. Something happened. They did. They didn't complete the course. Um, I don't know. I wasn't there. And I think it was the Market Raisin, which seems a funny course to start him off at, but that's where he started off over hurdles. And I went up to Weatherby. I, I, I went up to Moulton to ride him schooling a few days before the Weatherby race. And I, I couldn't sleep all that night. Yeah, it's, it's just great to go up to ride that horse. And, and uh, um, But unfortunately, the Weatherby race was the day after the bid to Newton Abbott, but luckily I had a chauffeur with Jeff Pierce. And uh, went up there and he won. Fabulous horse. And I won five, five chasers on him. And unfortunately got beat in that one. Uh, a picture of it is there. By a much fitter horse, Silver Buck, who had run the week before apparently, but Night Nurse hadn't run for 11 weeks. So I was asking a big question of him, but that was the last time I rode him. But then three, four days later, my career ended. <laughs>